If I say Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, or even Neymar, we all see them living the high life with expensive cars and designer clothes. But there's a darker side. But if you're an academy player, your chances of succeeding is 0.012%, which is the same chance of being hit by meteorites. I've decided to find out how academy players are dealt with and see if there's enough support for them. So I've come to meet with Jordan Hall, who was part of the Monaco Academy from age 9 to 16. So your final season, obviously there's a reason yeah. for, for, for that. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened. That season was our best season. We had lots of scouts uh, watching our games at the time. And I was approached by Birmingham to come and have a trial. They said that they're going to approach me to sign a contract with them. Did Monaco um, kind of talk to you before you went there? Did, did they tell you anything about what might happen if, if you get offered a contract? Um, if they come in with an offer, they said, we'll, we'll talk about it. However, we do, we do want to keep you next year. We want to sign you on a, on a contract, you know, um, a professional contract. After speaking to Jordan Hall, I thought Southampton Football Club would be an ideal place to come as its academy has seen the likes of Gareth Bale, Theo Walker or even Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. I've come here to speak to Ian Herding, who's the welfare officer at the academy, to find out more about what happens in the inside of a Premier League club. What do you say is the most difficult challenge for an academy player talking mentally? Pressure, massively. You're always looking to please. You've always got people watching you somewhere. We do a lot of mental health training with the players anyway. So under the new Premier League rulings, each player has to have access to a minimum of 90 minutes mental health training per season. The sporting side of it seems quite intense. Do you think some of those players put themselves in mind that they're going to be top footballers when they join this kind of academy? Yes, the thrill of being at a Premier League academy makes them to an extent feel that they've made it. But we make sure that through education that we keep them grounded and then we continue to look after them once they've left us. So players that have left us four or five years ago, I'm still in contact with just to say, how are things, where you're at, anything we can do for you. Wow. Well, so it comes to the end of the season. <coughs> yeah, it comes to the end of the season. Uh, obviously I've turned down the, the Birmingham deal. It comes to contract day and um, it's kind of like a turn up, roll up into the uh, recruitment office and uh, end up with a goodie bag and a goodbye. There was other people in the academy, it wasn't just me. There's other guys in there who, who didn't have the resources to come back home to and have a meal every night. You know, they were living in the academy. There was guys living inside the academy. For example, one of the guys, Jonathan, he, his parents lived in Algeria. Um, so when he was released, he, uh, he had to, you know, pay for his own flight back to um, back home and the club didn't do anything. Footballers are now seeking mental health help in record numbers and in one case a player that had been released by a Premier League club had taken his own life. So I've come to meet with Darren Britton, a sports psychologist at Soden University, to talk about what players might be going through. If you could talk to us about um, your experience at AFC Bournemouth, um, what's the most common mental issue for a football player? I think the biggest one is uncertainty. Uncertainty around selection, uncertainty as to whether they're going to be one of the few uh, players who are actually going to eventually make it as a player. And then that uncertainty can breed anxiety, low confidence, can um, affect motivation as well. Ian Herding, who's, who's the welfare officer at the Southampton Football Club Academy, told us that pressure is a huge thing for players. Can you tell us more about pressure? In football. Pressure is a funny one because one might argue that there's actually no such thing as pressure. Um, what there is, is perceived psychological pressure. So pressure isn't really a physical thing. It's actually solely to do with how we think about a situation, how we feel about a situation, which is entirely in our own minds. The players who are telling themselves, I must perform, I must go out and play well, probably aren't viewing the situation as, as one that, which they can have fun in. Have you heard of Heads Up? Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about Heads Up? So Heads Up is a charity working in partnership with the FA. 
who are trying to promote not just physical fitness through sport, but also uh, mental fitness as well. So what Heads Up is trying to do is really try and educate and raise awareness around positive mental health. We all have mental health. What are the things we are doing from a day-to-day -day basis to try and maintain our mental health? Talk us through what happened after that release. It's probably one of the most difficult times mm. in your life. Definitely the darkest period of my life. I went through a, a lot of pain. I had a lot of you know psychological problems. I had to see a, a psychiatrist. Um, but you found yourself, the club didn't provide them. No, I found all myself, yeah, yeah. Everything, you know, everything was put into that lifestyle of becoming a footballer. And when that was just stamped on, thrown, tossed away in the, in the, in the garbage, it was just, what do I do from here? So, um, I can feel it's quite emotional for you. Stopped playing football completely for a season. It wasn't the same anymore. I didn't have the desire, the passion, the love for the game anymore. So now we know more about the psychological side of players being released by academies, I've come here to the PFA in London to find out more about what they do to help those players. Our mission, certainly on the education side, is to, is to help players um, continue their personal development. Do, do players come to you um, when they have an issue with mental health? Yes, they do. We have a confidential 24-hour helpline. If your player eventually gets released, what do you do in that case? Well, in, first and foremost, their immediate contact, League Football Education. They have a robust policy where they track and monitor players for three years after they uh, leave their scholarship and then they often refer players to us who struggle to get going, don't seem to be in any sort of gainful employment or further education. What would your advice be for players going through a similar situation? Um, obviously it depends what situation they're going through. Obviously if they're still playing football I'd you know, suggest to just stick through it. You know, But if their mental side isn't in it anymore and you're not you're not going to want to play any longer obviously i've been through it all so i know what it's like and yeah if i could say anything it would just be you know to to keep your head screwed on and keep working because you know with hard work you know things do do work out eventually 